This afternoon, a steady rain. The rain will be heavy at times. High 65. Winds north at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Rainfall around a quarter of an inch. Tonight, partly cloudy skies. Low 44. Winds light and variable. One degrees with rainy conditions. Here's our local Doppler radar. Brisk walking is a good way for people to increase their activity levels and ease themselves into a more active lifestyle. It is also a way to slow down the biological aging process. Science Alert explains this biological age essentially means how worn out the body cells are. Here's what's going to blow your mind. The study published in Communications Biology found that a lifetime of walking at speeds above a stroll could mean the equivalent of being 16 years younger by middle age. Cellularly speaking, of course. The intensity of the walk is important. A leisurely stroll didn't appear to have the same effect in the study as a brisk walk did. But it is important to mention some movement is better than no movement at all. When it comes to its new second headquarters to be built across the Potomac from Washington, D.C., Amazon's designers are thinking outside the box. Give a little bit of your love, love to me. me. The Arlington County, Virginia board gave Amazon a lot of love. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Unanimously approving plans, including the Helix building with a walkable ramp surrounded by greenery, sort of a mountain hike that the public could access two days a month. Please tell me there's a slide to get down from the top after you hike it. Nope, sorry. The height will be about 350 feet. Does not have stories in the traditional sense. Twitter invented stories comparing the helix to everything from a rotini to a spaceship in disguise to the Tower of Babel. Some noted similarities to an ancient mosque built back in the 9th century in present day Iraq. The helix sure is eye catching. Amazon in its prime. Someone emphasized the shape by tweeting, they're screwed. And while this commenter used a bedazzled emoji to say, how cool is this building? Someone else weaponized another popular emoji. Who says you can't polish a turd? Looks pretty shiny to us. Genimos, CNN, New York. Hey there, it's Tuesday and I'm Sasha and you survived Monday, right? So let's build on that because we want to do more than just survive. We want to thrive and Local Now wants to help you do just that. It's always easy to skip exercise on a Monday, but if you did, forgive yourself and then watch our Body and Mind Fitness Show for some tips on how to make getting in that workout easier going forward. Another area affecting our quality of life is job stress, but if it's more than that, you could be suffering what's called moral injury at work. Dr. Wendy breaks down what that is and what to do about it. But hey, we're not all work and no play. No, no. In fact, if you've got an axe to grind, start tuning it up to help us celebrate International Guitar Month. Access TV now has a host of documentaries and some of the all-time guitar greats, including the legendary Carlos Santana. It doesn't get any better than that. And a little music always gets me in a better mood. We want to make it easier to make your life better, so check out everything Local Now offers to do just that. And have a terrific Tuesday.
Here's the outlook for your week ahead. Vice President Kamala Harris has tested positive for COVID. The VP's press secretary says neither the president nor first lady were considered close contacts of Harris in recent days. Because of their travel schedules, the last time the VP saw President Biden was April 18th. The White House says she's not showing any symptoms. Harris will isolate at home and work remotely until she tests negative. Her diagnosis comes a month after her husband recovered from the virus, as well as a wave of cases that spread through Capitol Hill. The next time you buy some cooking oil, expect to pay a little more for it. Cooking oil prices have been rising worldwide since the pandemic started, and now Russia's war in Ukraine is bumping those prices even higher. Ukraine and Russia are the world's top exporters of sunflower oil. It's leading to a shortage, and some countries are even putting limits on how much vegetable oil people can buy at supermarkets. Restaurants and other businesses that rely on cooking oil are passing the higher prices on to customers or eating the expense themselves. incidents and events in your area. Let's take a look at the latest airport delays. Here are today's lottery numbers.
The Biden White House is temporarily blocked from ending Title 42 by a federal judge in Louisiana. If President Biden lifts Title 42, what we see today will be much worse. A country without a secure border is not a country. Title 42 allows U.S. border officials to turn migrants away due to public health concerns, namely the COVID-19 pandemic. This is not an immigration policy. This uh, Title 42 is a health authority that's determined by the CDC. Uh, and we, uh, we need to have a conversation about immigration reform. That's vital. Maybe this is a reminder of that. Critics of removing the order say it is likely to cause a greater surge of migrants at an already stressed border. Title 42 is a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. It's not actual border security. It's important, but it represents the ability to turn people away and actually secure the border. President Joe Biden wants to end the policy, which was invoked during the Trump administration on May 23rd, and a White House source says the federal judge's block may not disrupt those plans. I would note that there are a range of views on Title 42. There are some, you noted, who are very vocal about how they would like to see it extended. There are some who are very vocal about how they would not like to see that happen. So that's an important discussion that will be happening over the coming days and weeks. I'm John Lawrence reporting. With the COVID vaccine shot still not available for small children, a new weapon may help fight the virus. The Food and Drug Administration just authorized the use of rendesivir to treat COVID in patients as young as 28 days old. The antiviral drug is given as an injection. The FDA's action makes it the first drug approved to treat COVID in kids younger than 12. In order to receive rendesivir, infected kids must either already be hospitalized or deemed at high risk for developing severe COVID. China's zero COVID lockdown policies are now sparking panic buying in the capital of Beijing as the government announces plans for mass testing. Panic shoppers were seen raiding grocery store shelves and markets with three rounds of testing announced this week. A total of about 20 million residents will get tested for COVID-19. If rates are higher, more districts across the city could be placed under lockdown to stop the spread. City officials say 70 cases of COVID have been detected in the city over the past five days. The electric vehicle future is adding a flashy new ride, the Chevrolet Corvette. General Motors just announced plans to build a fully electric model with a hybrid version soon on the way. There's no exact timeline on when the fully electrified Corvette may come to market or how much it might cost. But the hybrid model is expected to hit the streets as early as next year. The new version may also be all-wheel drive, a feature not seen on previous Corvettes. Lizzo just announced her first tour in three years. She'll be hitting the concert trail in September for a 25-show North America tour to promote her new album, Special, which drops July 15th. Welcome to the real world. Ever wanted to own a piece of the Matrix? Well, now's your chance. Matrix filmmakers Lily and Lana Wachowski are auctioning off memorabilia from their personal archive to raise money for transgender youth protection and advocacy organizations. The auction's set for May 12th, but you can get your bids in before then on PotterAuctions.com. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. We are getting our first look at the hectic scene when a shooting on the film set of Rust left the cinematographer dead and Alec Baldwin holding the gun. Santa Fe, New Mexico officials released videos and dozens of photos taken at the film set last October. They responded to the scene when Helena Hutchins was shot by Alec Baldwin when the prop gun he was using in a scene went off at close range and was apparently loaded with a live round. The video also included a conversation with Baldwin who explained how the gun went off during a rehearsal. The local DA will not make a charging decision until a full investigation is complete. I was at the end, I was broken. Actor Johnny Depp concluded his testimony on Monday in the defamation case he filed against ex-wife Amber Heard. Of course there, there's been negative stories. On Depp's fourth day on the witness stand in a Virginia court, Heard's attorneys showed the jury news articles that they said had damaged Depp's career. Entitled, Apparently Drunk Johnny Depp Cut Off at Hollywood Film Awards Ceremony. 
well before the December 2018 opinion piece in the Washington Post, in which Hertz said she was a survivor of domestic abuse. The next article, also from May 10th, 2017, a year and a half before the op-ed was published, says Johnny Depp reportedly drank heavily and was constantly late on the new Pirates movie set. Did I read that right? You did, reportedly. The next article, these are all also pieces. from May 10, 2017. Drugs, Mr. Is, Depp, this is a pathetic attempt. Mr. Depp, please just respond to the question that I'm asking you. What's your the question, next question Mr. The next, the next document. Depp said he never struck herd or any woman. The only person that I have ever abused in my life is myself. He said Hurd's allegations cost him everything. Depp was dropped from the Fantastic Beasts film franchise, and a new Pirates of the Caribbean movie was put on hold. On Monday, Depp said Disney presumed he was guilty until proven innocent, adding that he planned to continue with Pirates of the Caribbean until it was time to stop. Captain Jack Sparrow was a character that I had built from the ground up. My feeling was that these characters should be able to have their proper goodbye, as it were. Depp concluded his testimony on Monday saying he was the victim of domestic violence in their relationship and was broken by the time their marriage fell apart. His attorneys played audio from a conversation that took place after Heard had secured a restraining order against him in 2016. Tell the world, Johnny, tell them Johnny Depp, I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim too of domestic violence. Yes. And I, you know, it's a fair fight. In the recording, Depp proposed the couple issue a joint letter saying they loved each other and the media had created a storm around them. The suggestion was an attempt to find a peaceful settlement, according to Depp. snack between meals? If you do, you are not alone. In fact, the majority of people do the same. According to a study of 2,000 Americans between the ages of 18 and 41, conducted by one poll on behalf of the National Peanut Butter Board, 57% of people say that they snack in between their meals, but they stop when it gets close to meal time. Three and four say they stop snacking an hour before their next meal. 42% say they reach for a snack because they need an energy boost. Stress also leads to snacking, with 68% saying they reach for a snack when they feel anxiety or stress. The National Peanut Butter Board found that when it comes to peanuts, 51% say that they are a snack, but one-third say that peanuts count as a whole meal. Then they're definitely a healthier option than some other treats. Here's our look at national business news. Hello, I'm Hannah Doba. Here are some of your top stories from Cheddar News on Local Now. Workers at another Staten Island Amazon sorting center are voting today on whether to form a union. Employees of the sorting facility, known as LDJ5, will decide whether or not to vote to join the Amazon Labor Union, or ALU. 
Those votes will be counted on May 2nd. The greatest job on earth may just be in Texas, and it is delicious. Food delivery company Favor is offering $10,000 to one lucky taco connoisseur to sample tacos all across the state as its first ever chief taco officer. Taco lovers can apply on Favor's website until May 12th. Google launching a new inclusive language function on its search engine to avoid the use of politically incorrect words. Gender-specific terms will be replaced by more gender-neutral terms. Not everyone's a fan of Google's attempt to go politically correct, with critics calling it intrusive. That's it for us today. Check back later for updated headlines from Cheddar News on Local Now. The Biden administration is working to expand the availability of a COVID antiviral treatment to anyone who needs it. Known as Paxlovid, the Pfizer pill was first approved in December. The administration is trying to raise awareness and make it easier to access, especially for people at high risk of severe illness or death. Supply of the pill was very limited at first, but as COVID cases across the country have fallen and manufacturing has increased, there's a greater inventory. Fifty nine degrees with rainy conditions. Here's our local Doppler radar. One of the largest streaming platforms in the world is dealing with major losses, and experts say it's a growing trend with more households cutting streaming services in response to inflation. CNN's Isabel Rosales has the details and what it could mean for the future of streaming. American households are tightening their budgets, and streaming services are taking a hit. It's just a really messy moment in the market with changing consumer behaviors. Last week, Netflix announced it lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter and says it expects to lose a huge 2 million subscribers before July. A new survey conducted by research firm Momentum and CNBC found 35% of Americans cut a monthly subscription to rein in their spending, while another 36% are considering it. Another survey done in the UK by research firm Kantar found some services like Disney Plus are struggling to keep up with Netflix, which was still first choice for consumers to keep. Experts say it's evidence that Disney Plus is still trying to figure out what people want to watch. Thunder. The popular ABC show Dancing with the Stars will air exclusively on Disney Plus starting in the fall. If the only thing that your library has is kids content or Marvel content or Pixar content, there's a difficult question of how do you keep audiences happy? And it's not just U.S. households cutting back. According to Kantar, people in Britain canceled 1.5 million subscriptions this year. You have obviously inflation and, and the war and a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace. So what else is to blame? Streaming services boomed during the pandemic, but that's changing with a return to normal and inflation rising. Experts also point to a behavioral shift among younger generations. And YouTube is free. Uh, and YouTube's usage ticked up in the U.S. in March 2022 more than Netflix's. I'm Isabel Rosales. Want some free fries? Burger King is giving them away, but there's a catch. The freebies are only available to members of Burger King's free Royal Perks Digital Loyalty Program. Now through the rest of the year, customers can add French fries of any size to their purchase 
once a week at no extra cost. The promotion is aimed at expanding BK's loyalty program, which the company says is a major focus as it shifts away from paper coupons. North Korea is apparently speeding up its missile and nuclear weapons programs to counter the West. Dictator Kim Jong-un announced the new steps during a military parade in the country this week, which included North Korea's largest known ICBM to date. Recent talks of denuclearization have stalled between North Korea and the West, and U.S. and South Korean officials also say the country has been quietly repairing a nuclear test site, which hasn't been in operation in about four years, a sign the North may be resuming banned nuclear weapons testing. NASA's first all-tourist trip to the ISS is now over with a successful splashdown off Florida's coast. Three rich businessmen and a former NASA astronaut all wrapped up a 17-day journey into low Earth orbit this week. They each paid $55 million for the voyage, the first time NASA ever opened its hatches for tourists since the start of the International Space Station. Space tourism company Axiom ferried the crew to and from the ISS in hopes to launch another similar tourism mission early next year. These are some scary sights that aren't just happening within Colorado, although these are the fires of Colorado. Many are occurring all across the southwest part of the country, back into Texas, on up into parts of the western plains. More of an elevated to critical fire danger continues. Air quality is suffering, and the winds help to carry these wildfires quickly. So let's hope we have some relief in sight. Welcome to your weather across America. I'm local now meteorologist Brittley Ritz. While we are still dry across the southwest, we have rain chances moving on to the east coast with the cold front that's slowly cooling us all down. Let's head on in to the northeast where you see the greens all the way down into the east coast and back across the southeast. A few stronger storms cannot be ruled out on the east coast of the Carolinas. Otherwise, it's the colder air, 40s and 50s in Chicago. Eventually, we'll cool it down into New England, so enjoy your one more day of warmth. Many of us in the 50s and 60s, again, can't really enjoy the warmth because it's raining. Down through the southeast, scattered showers, a few rumbles of thunder. It's simply that, scattered. Not everyone's getting wet, but what it will do is reinforce some cooler air. Memphis, 60s today. Atlanta, low 70s. few stronger storms expected, like I said, on the Carolinas coastline, back into parts of Georgia and on up into the Virginias, Richmond, Norfolk, back into Statesboro. We'll see the chance for isolated hail and strong damaging winds. The tornado threat is extremely low. We work our way on up into the Ohio Valley, finally catching some sunshine. The Midwest looking fantastic and attempting to warm back up. I mean, Lincoln, Nebraska, back into the mid-70s. Yeah, we'll take it. Into the Pacific Northwest, rain chances still holding on with snow chances across the Cascades and the Northern Rockies. Otherwise, we're extremely dry as we talked about across the Southwest as temperatures crank back up near 100 in Phoenix. It's time for dinner. Here's a local pick you shouldn't miss.
another local pick in our area that's looking great. Here's a look at the full list of top picks for our area.